My name is Jason Vong and I'm partnering up with Zeiss to bring you guys five introductory videos to modern day travel filmmaking for free on my channel and on Zeiss's official YouTube channel. I know, I'm pretty excited too. This video is just part one in which we'll go over the essential gear that includes cameras, lenses, and a few other accessories that we'll be using to shoot this cinematic travel vlog out here in Japan. So not only are we gonna go over what we're using, but why we're using them with detailed imagery as examples. Now you may be wondering, why are we using travel as our base to learn basic cinematography? That simple. This background right here is a lot better than if I were to shoot the same video out in my own backyard. But really though, I think everyone loves to travel. And when they're on vacation, they want to know how to capture great visuals with something that's better quality than their smartphones. Thumbs up if you agree. So get ready to enjoy some fun tutorials. And by the end of it all, you should have a pretty good idea of what types of shots to look out for, for the story you're trying to tell, and the basics on how to capture and enhance the power of your storytelling. Okay, so gear, you're going to see a huge trend here. We're gonna be using a lot of lightweight, small, and compact equipment. It's pretty obvious. When you're traveling, you'll be constantly moving and shooting. You don't wanna be lugging a lot of heavy gear around and tire yourself out. We wanna have fun with what we're doing and thanks to modern day technology, cameras, lenses, and their accessories have shrunk quite a bit to take our mind off the weight and focus on being creative. So let's start off with the camera first. We will be using the Sony a7 III for many reasons. Number one, it's a full frame sensor size camera, which is going to allow us to capture more shallow depth of field, AKA the blurrier backgrounds that we are all obsessed with. But not only that, full frame sensors can capture low light scenes with less noise and less screen. Two, it can shoot 4K in both 24 and 30 frames per second, the highest and best resolutions to shoot at for maximum image quality. For slow motion, we'll be shooting 1080p HD to take advantage of the high frame rate options, 60 and 120 frames per second. We're gonna go more in depth on capturing stunning slow motion scenes in part three of this series. The third reason is in-body image stabilization. It is insanely helpful when you're shooting handheld because it minimizes the jitteriness of your footage. Number four, Sony has one of the best autofocusing system out there, especially for video work. We're gonna go more in depth in part two, where I'll show you the different focus areas and how to use them to help you nail focus. Number five, the Sony a7 III has an incredible amount of dynamic range. And dynamic range is just how a camera captures and maintains details in the highlights and shadows. And the best way to preserve those details is by shooting in a log profile. Although the footage will look flat and dull when you shoot it, it's actually capturing more information for you to color grade later. There are several options for shooting log, but my favorite is Hybrid Log Gamma. It's the easiest to shoot with and the easiest to grade later. Moving on to lens choices. Because we're working with Zeiss on this educational series, we'll be primarily focusing on the bodice lineup, which are specifically designed for Sony full frame E-mount cameras. Now the characteristics that I love most about the bodice lenses are that they are lightweight, compact, and high quality. They are fully compatible with Sony's autofocusing system, which means they'll focus swiftly, accurately, and smoothly. Personally, I own and use three out of the five lenses. Now you don't need all five to create a travel film, but I just wanna show you how each focal length can be used in different situations and how each can help you tell your story. Starting off with the 18 mm f2.8, this is an ultra wide angle lens, great for establishing shots. You can use it to show off the landscape, the architecture, and the environment that you're in. And it being an ultra wide angle lens helps you show more of the surrounding. And when you can combine this lens with a stabilizer, it creates this feeling where you're inviting the audience into the world you're trying to show them. This is great for vlogging as well because it's wide enough to capture you as a character and a subject and showing the surrounding that you're in. Moving on to the next lens, the 25mm f2. This is a standard wide angle lens. It's not as wide as the 18mm so it doesn't distort the perspective as much. Moving on to the 40mm f2, this is a mid-range lens that is incredibly versatile because of its close focusing capability. Now, not as close as a macro lens, but you can still get close enough to an object and focus on the details. Some would say this focal length is closer to what a human eye can see compared to a 50mm, so the 40mm feels more natural. It puts the audience in the action, seeing what you're seeing. 
Moving on to the 85mm f1.8, a short telephoto prime lens. This is a very popular focal length for portraits because it's the most flattering on human subjects, especially on their faces, as opposed to using a wider lens and getting up close to them. It also makes what you capture seem a lot more interesting. For example, with a wider lens, you could be capturing an uninteresting scene with lots of clutter and mess in the background that can be distracting for the audience. But with an 85mm, you can separate your subject from the background and direct the audience's attention to the subject while blurring out the mess. Another reason to use an 85mm is the compression it gives off. It makes the background, or the foreground, and the main subject view not too far away from one another. And lastly, the 135mm f2.8. This is a longer telephoto prime lens and it shares a lot of similar characteristics as the 85mm. I personally have been using it to get shots of things that are too far away, things I cannot get physically close to. The 135 also allows me to be unobtrusive when capturing subjects and their natural reactions from a distance. Again, you don't need all five lenses. I have them for this trip to demonstrate to you what kind of results they can produce. All you need is just a minimum of two lenses and these are the pairings I would suggest. 18 and 40 or 25 and the 85. And feel free to add the 135 to either of these setups if you know you need the extra distance. For example, if you're shooting an event or a show that you know you cannot get physically close to. Moving on to the rest of the accessories. The Zhiyun Weibo Lab. This is a three-axis, one-handed stabilizer that we will be using a whole lot on this trip. This allows us to capture smooth and steady footage and add movements to scene where there aren't a lot of movements to begin with. Honestly, a gimbal can replace a lot of the other filmmaking tools that we would want to bring that we would otherwise have no space for, like a tripod, slider, and jib. I'll have a whole dedicated section on using gimbals in part 4 of the series. Moving on to the tripod. We are using the Manfrotto B3 on this trip. Now depending on what you want to capture and your style of filmmaking, the tripod may be optional. Some would prefer locked off shots like this and let the subjects in the scene move. I personally like doing time lapses so having a stable tripod is a must. An integral part of any film is the sound, so the audio solution we'll be using on this trip is the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. We can show off the pretty scenery all we want, but to elevate the feeling and really make the audience feel like they're there with us is by having the ambiance of the location, so spend some time to capture the sound as well. Moving on to the last set of items, ND filters. Now these are optional, but highly recommended. I will go over these in great lengths in part 3 of the series, but essentially, these are like sunglasses for your lenses. ND filters help you maintain the correct settings when shooting videos and help make them look more professional. Don't forget, this is just one of my 5 part series to modern day travel filmmaking. You'll find the rest of the videos by clicking up here for the playlist or finding in the description box below. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!